Welcome to Six Gun Guitars Luthier Lessons videos. Today we're going to talk about how to make your own shellac. Um, I've been using this stuff out of can in some of my other videos because it's a little bit easier, it's a little bit quicker. Um, not necessarily easier, but I guess it's just a little less time consuming. You can just pop open the can and the stuff's ready to go. The only problem with it is you're stuck with a three or four pound cut, um, depending on the can. And that sometimes it's a little bit thick for what you're planning on doing. You know, so if you want to do a wash coat um, before a finish, if you want to do you know, say a lighter cut, you know, just to tone a little bit. I mean, you're kind of stuck with that three or four pound cut. Usually the cans are three pound, you know, but you're really kind of stuck with that. And you're really stuck with the color that it produces. You're stuck with the thickness that it comes out at. You're really stuck with everything. But if you get your own bag shellac, just the flakes, the de-wax shellac flakes, and they come in a number of colors, you can mix it with the nature alcohol yourself. Um, it takes a little time, usually overnight or so, or at least a few hours or more, you know, to dissolve the stuff into the solution. But once it's dissolved, you can do any strength you want, and the stuff is always going to be ready for you. So what I picked up was some of this stuff, and these are just de-wax shellac flakes. Um, the company is BT and C, and this is the blonde. So there's a there's a there's a clear almost like a bleached, then a blonde, um, then there's a, usually like a garnet, you know, and a ruby. There's a few different kind of darknesses and, and colors as you go through. But I'm going to go with the blonde. Um, just because I want to add a little bit of a tint with the shellac, but I don't really want to go super orange, you know, or really super dark, like in a garnet. So I got my shellac flakes, and this is a pound, a one pound bag, which helps when we're starting to add things together. I got a couple of one quart jars from uh, Kerr here. Just got two of them. You get 12 of them for 12 bucks or 13 bucks, so basically a bucket jar. And then I picked up some denatured alcohol. Now, what I'm going to do is take you over to the bench and show you how we do this. But essentially what it is, is the way that you make this stuff and these, the cuts, the thing, the, the term that I keep throwing around here, the cut refers to how much shellac is actually in the solution. So if I were to have a gallon and put one pound in there, I've got a one pound cut because it's all based on the gallon and based on how, much, how many pounds. Now, if I had a half a gallon and I put in a whole pound, now I'm up to a two pound cut. If I have a quarter gallon and I put in a whole pound, I'm up to a four pound cut. Because if I were to have a quarter gallon with one of these, it would take four of these to do an entire gallon. There's why you get the four pound cut. What I'm planning on doing is doing a little bit of French polishing. So what I want to do is get a two pound cut. So what I'm going to do with my quart jars here, and it's nice to know the math on your gallons to quarts to pints. You know, so a gallon is made up of four quarts. Each quart is made up of two pints. So when you take a one pint amount of alcohol and you add one quarter pound of this, you end up with a two pound cut. And the math is fast and it sounds fuzzy, but you'll be able to follow it. You know, because if I were to do, you know, half of this, you know, or even to do the whole thing into a quart as a four pound cut, you dilute that again, you know, 50 50, you're down to a two pound cut. You know, just the rule of thumb to do it is just mix up about a pint at a time. So I'm going to do one pint with a quarter of this, which is going to be a two pound cut. Because if I put a quarter of it into a quart, it would be a, a uh, I'm sorry, a quarter of it into a quart would be a one pound cut. So a quarter of it into half as much makes it a two pound cut because there's twice as much in there. And like I said, I don't mean to confuse anybody with all the numbers thrown around. Just make up a pint. Make up a pint in a two pound cut, nice and easy to use. It's a very medium strength one. You want to have a pint of denatured alcohol and a quarter of your bag of shellac flakes. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my jar and I'm going to fill it with alcohol. And the reason I'm going to do that first is because if I were to fill this jar with a quarter of my bag of shellac flakes, then start trying to get as much alcohol in here to get it up to half full, it's actually going to be stronger because the shellac flakes are going to, dis they're going to dissipate some of that water. They're going to displace some of that water or some of the denatured alcohol rather. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this maybe about halfway with denatured alcohol and then I'm going to visually add about a quarter of my bag of shellac flakes. Um, you can weigh them out. I mean that's the way to get the absolute precise measurements on that. But if you just eyeball it, you're going to get very, very close to your cut, and you're going to be just fine as far as shellac goes. So what I'm going to do now, go ahead and 
pour this into my jar. So get all the denatured alcohol in here. And like I said, I'm going to pour in about half, half of it. This is a one quart jar, or one quart can of denatured alcohol. So I'm going to get myself filled up about halfway here. Uh, halfway, that looks about right. And just a little bit more. Right. So close that back off. Now what I'm going to do is add about a quarter of my shellac. Because that's going to that's going to get me to that two pound cut. So again, just kind of visualizing as we go here. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and pour it off. I'm going to go ahead and pour it off into here first, so that way I can make sure we've got it about right. So that right there is about a quarter of my bag. Actually, I'll pop in just a shade more. So that right there is about a quarter of my bag. Like I said, it's not 100% scientific. You know, it's just going to get you real, real close. If you have a little scale, you can weigh out a quarter pound of the stuff if it makes you feel better. That's always okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these flakes to my denatured alcohol. And what you're going to have to do every once in a while is come back into the shop and stir these guys up. Um, you can just kind of agitate them. You don't really have to stir them too much. But you want to keep your jar closed nice and tight so that way the alcohol that's in there doesn't absorb any, any water from the air. So just kind of give it a good stirry stir like that. You know, you just got to come out and check on it every now and then. You don't want the stuff to wind up a solid mass on the bottom. And after you're done, too, you can test the cut on it. You can brush it out or rub it out, however you plan on doing it. See what it looks like. You know, see what the color looks like for you. And you can always add a little bit of natured alcohol back to this to thin it or add a little bit of shellac to it to thicken it. But... That's basically it. You're going to have to leave it for several hours, if not overnight. Um, overnight will typically always work. You want to store it in a cool, dark location, so that way the stuff is preserved. And the other thing that's a really good idea to do is on the top of the jar, write the date that you made it. Uh, today is the 8th, so I'm going to write 1, 8, 12 on the top of the jar. So I don't have to question how good this stuff is or how old it is if I happen to have some left. i got a feeling I'm going to use the majority of this really, really soon. But again, nice and tight, agitate it really good. This is a metal lid, but the inside is coated, so it is a plastic coating on there. So I'm not really worried about it. You definitely want to use a glass jar, not a metal container. You don't want to have the alcohol react to anything. But again, this takes a while to absorb and you know, shake it around you know, every couple hours. You, know, you really don't have to babysit it too much. But like I said, you still want to have a lump show up in the bottom. But that's mixing the shellac. Uh, we'll go on to a couple other things later on just, uh, to do with shellac in my videos. And um, if you have any questions, just shoot me an email at sixgunguitars at gmail.com, and we'll go from there. But again, just a bottle, denatured alcohol, and shellac, and you're pretty much there. And again, a lot of different colors, a lot of different options. You can really have some fun and experiment and do some nice finishing.